I was just about to say this. So <laughs> when you're a student, I think you do the IKEA run and you at the supermarket. Infamous. Run, and you IKEA picture run. the day that you're gonna have nice play. <laughs> Never <laughs> <right>. <laughs> It's just <laughs> Welcome to The Vault with Financial. This is a safe space where we talk all things life and money and no topics are off limits. Hello. Hello. Good morning. How are you both? You good? Very good. good. Very good. Very good. Got my Miss Money on today. That'll change it up a little bit. Give my money. She's not together. been out for a while. Not a lot of people spot the eyelashes, but when they do. No, Lydia did a great she's a job. She. She's, she's a she. she. Money is a she. Money is a she. Yeah. Okay. They're talking about the t-shirts, by the way. Oh, yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> what about our non-visual audio <laughs> listeners? No context. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love people don't see the Do money. You know what? If you're not watching it on YouTube, get watching it on YouTube because you get so much more out of it. Like, you you'll know us. what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a controversial opinion. And I think this actually is controversial. Okay. Your side hustle is holding you back. Ooh, be careful. Mm-hmm. Side hustles are popular. Can we list some of our favourite, but not favourite side hustles that we see on the internet? We get cancelled. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're teaming up to get cancelled. Yeah, it's good for business. <sighs> Surveys. Surveys. Herbalife. Wax melts. <laughs> Vinted. Vinted, yeah. This uh, is like bingo. This is like side yeah. hustle bingo. You can say the most controversial one. <laughs> Only fans. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? That becomes Only a main fans? job for that some people. No, I think OnlyFans is Standard. worth it. Yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> tell us more. <laughs> what I mean? This is taking a, I don't think a segue. Way. Exchanging time for money, I suspect it's better than a survey. Definitely. Oh, it's much more lucrative. Do only fans instead. Put the surveys down. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us for more. Get the webcam money out. Wisdom. Can you do both at the same time? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> watch me fill out surveys. Oh my god, that's all I'd make when an only fans someone watching me do watch me do a survey. <laughs> Can they do like live streams on TikTok and stuff? Look at that. She's on a fifty seventh survey. <laughs> So she earned 12p. <laughs> You'd probably earn more from TikTok than you would from the surveys. I feel like it's definitely always been a, a bugbear of yours. I think we did. I think we did, right? A couple of years ago, we did a make money march challenge and you had to try lots of different ways to make extra money. And um, and the, the, th- the feeling behind it was... Um, when you are on a debt-free journey and actually it is important to find extra money quick... Mm-hmm. From from extra sources from your job, you know, to be able to lead up to a pay rise in a job or to take on a promotion or extra work or move, that takes time. It also may not be feasible. You might have just recently got a pay rise and it's just not something that you can, well, you know, demand immediately. So then you go on to other things like, okay, how can I sell things? And so we, it was a really good um, exercise to help flex that muscle of how can I do this? But never meant to be long term, never meant to um, be sustainable. Because yeah, how much can you income. sell in your house? Like, yeah. I think Facebook Marketplace was one, there's and you an were like, point. <laughs> you need to stop point. now. <laughs> but actually, and on reflection, and I think we've grown a lot as a business with our thoughts on side hustle culture. Holly <laughs> lasted less than a day. I think I lost money. <laughs> doing surveys. <laughs> I feel like I did something wrong, and then I lost money doing the survey, and I was like, this. This is you never, yeah. never will I do this again. And felt, then felt very passionate that there'd be loads of women sat at home trying to fit in side hustles around, say they've got part-time, they've got children, caring responsibilities, whatever it might be. I like killing themselves, staying up till stupid o'clock at night. Because I know this happens as a, you for know. Pence, yeah, yeah. For, pe- for pence. I think 12p. It's not worth I think it. 50p. It's like there are better ways to make money. And there's a time and a place for them, I'm sure. And people can unlock really lucrative ones where it's like 50 pounds, 100 pounds. Perfect. You have to do a hell of a lot of the 12p ones. You have to be at your desk at a certain time. Like It's actually quite time consuming whereby in all that time, if you added it up, you could have gone and got a job, a part-time job. That's not a side hustle, yeah. like go and get extra income. That you know way. what you're going to earn. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's really hard. It, like 
I love the idea that some people could start a side hustle in something that they're passionate about and it later become a career. Again, yeah. that is different. That's a different thing. I also think if you find a joy in blogging or content creation and you want to do a little bit on, on the side, again, that on the OnlyFans joke, that's more of a step into yes. exchanging valuable time for money. I'm going to do Add this to blog. Your skill and I'm going to set as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, exactly. Like Portfolio. Does nothing. No. No, I think it's these little penny pinching ones like the, again, it, it's just making women think small. I think we, we kept thinking if we keep promoting things like side hustles that are, that are connected to such low value things would just women are constantly thinking small when it comes to making money whereas the men that we speak to in our lives would never even dream of doing a survey that no they'd be like okay I'm gonna go for a promotion yes or yeah. I'm gonna start a true side hustle like I don't know content creation or whatever it might be something where they know they're gonna get a large amount of money coming in but yeah main, main hustle small. first main for and, and what I love about today um the working environment is there's such flexibility and location that and hours that for someone who um you know may have caring responsibilities and or can't commute and travel or like you feel like they, they are they have been historically limited in a career the, you can find jobs that are flexible. You can, it's, you know, it's not e- it's not easy definitely, but you you can do that. And so when some people used to say, well, I like you know, selling body shop because I can do it around my kids and I can yeah. do this. Ultimately, time for money, there's n- I, usually you're losing money. Yeah. Usually you are. So I've done MLMs or a scam. I don't need to go into that side of it, but it definitely uh, is something that we want people to encourage focusing on building their, like, their own um, their own skill set, their own um, career yeah. and going that route because that's the route that then has the Pension contribution yes. element to it, the ability to buy a home, potential health insurance, like yeah, private health care. Leaning like, into that is much, is much better. Like I said, there's definitely a time and a place, especially if you're on a bit of a money journey, to see if you can make extra bits and bobs of money. But do not flog yourself. Yeah, I was about to say the only time I remember um, it coming up quite a lot when people on maternity leave, and you know, we talked previously about you don't feel like you're contributing to the household. And they and these people felt like the only way that they felt like they were contributing, but but I would also say maternity was so hard. That it is. I'd rather you put more work into therapy yeah. <laughs> about your self worth. Yeah. yeah, about about actually the value that you bring in, mm-hmm. and have that time to rest when you can and look after the baby. Again, comes from um, position of privilege because some people are having to do this to kind of literally make it balance Mm -hmm. um but this i do think side hustle culture has gone now a little bit thankfully i think there was a time when it was like it was like covid yeah i remember and i saw this really interesting thing which is about like most people most wealthy people became wealthy or made money from doing one thing really well yes one thing so this seven streams of income bullshit is is not the early bit what happens is when you focus on one thing and hopefully you're doing like your pension investment and stuff, but save yourself a business. And a lot of people do make generational generational wealth through running a business, but you can do it through also moving up the career ladder. But once you have got to a critical mass of assets, which you, you feel comfortable with, then it's a great idea to make sure that that is split across, not just your house, not just your investments, not just cash. And that's what we call diversified income. So these like seven, make sure you've got seven streams of income is for someone who has probably seven figures plus of money yeah. and let that work for you. But you don't want to do blogging and surveys and um, content creation. And part-time bar work. I think that's what people do. And they kind of like, go, I'll do it all. Yeah. And you don't give 100% to each one, so you don't really make You're that good much. at one thing. You don't, you don't move enough in it and it doesn't bring you enough revenue in. But yeah, Holly was rubbish. She quit. <laughs> she lost money and then we didn't do it again. <laughs> 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 okay ready for the first dilemma yes go on dilemma hats on okay i want to invest but i'm in debt hi girls i think i may have put myself in a difficult situation and i'm not sure where to go from here so i'd love some help i'd like to start off by saying i'm new to the financial community and i can't wait to get started started on my money journey i'm currently 38 I don't have any children and I live with my partner. We split bills 50-50 as we earn roughly the same. Luckily, we're both on the same page when it comes to money. So that's never been an issue for us. Anyway, my issue lies amongst my friends. It seems like out of nowhere, everyone is making great money progress. Talking about their investments, which I never knew they all had. Discussing their multiple incomes of rental properties, etc, etc. Meanwhile, my partner and I are focused on paying down our debt. 
which was roughly 4k, nothing major. The past few weeks, I've set myself up on an investment platform as I feel like I need to get ahead. Everyone talks about the fact that you have to invest ASAP to benefit from compound interest. So that's what I feel like I need to do. Am I getting too caught up in what the people around me are doing? Should I start investing now to get ahead? It's a really good dilemma. Yeah, and so right on the compound thing. You Mm. know, the earlier, the better. For those who don't understand compound interest, it's the fact that like money invested over time, it's time that helps money create money. It's not necessarily contributions. And so if you uh, can go onto any compound interest calculator online, honestly, have a little look. It's really fascinating to see the graph in, mm. and, and, you know, saying if you invested £100 a month from the age of 20, um, you know, every month based on whatever returns, like between 5 and 10%, plug different numbers in because it's different in every country and every situation, you'll be able to see how time impacts the compound, which means um, it's not just the money at the end is not just from what you put in in contributions, it's from growth. So yes, but there's a side to this that she she won't be seeing for the, her friends is she doesn't know their net worth and how it's pulled together just because people can have lots of investments and or rental properties, but actually have a, a lot of debt as well. And so your ultimate net worth is calculated from the, the amount of assets that you've got and you take off any liabilities. So that's firstly, she doesn't know just because they're talking about investments. You don't know where it is, uh, where they're at with debts. And so she's not got a lot of debt, uh, especially it sounds like it's between them even. Mm-hmm. And, and for £4,000 to at least lean into cracking on with that and getting rid of it you'll have more cash to deploy into investments the danger of doing it at the same time is that four grand takes forever to clear because you're trying to put money into your investment account and you, you kind of do, do well at neither now there might be a maths argument that is if that's on a not percent and it's four grand debt and mm-hmm. she could be making you know five percent in the the market on average over the year that yes, yeah, you should invest and just leave that debt there. But but we know that life hits you, and so it's so much um, it's so much easier to manage when you've not got loads of things going on, when you've not got debt payments to make, you've got emergency cash savings, and so I yeah I, I like that she wants to lean into it. Um, we've talked about this previously on the c- comparison being the thief of joy. I love that she's inspired to it, um, but kind of being content to wait a little bit longer Mm. it wouldn't impact her I think the fact that she said the 4k is like nothing major yeah can also be like damaging because you kind of like they might just let it sit there yeah it doesn't seem very much actually if you both double down into that that could be gone very quickly between you both yeah and then like you can both go in together on your investment journey and make a really big good go at it yeah i think a lot of people just try running too many horses at once we see it so so often people are like i've 20 grand in debt but i want to buy a house and we're like okay that's fine you can do that but you're just going to spread yourself so thin apart from the fact that you won't be able to borrow as much maybe because you've got debt payments that are yeah. going out and whatnot you want to be in the best possible financial situation when you've got a big money life goal coming up and trying to do too many things at once more life admin it's a distraction you're not really making progress because you've yeah, feeding a bit like here and the putting time. a bit there yeah. yeah I think just having one set goal and like you said four grand isn't a lot to them they're fortunate that they must have the income that means that they can get rid of that quite quickly it will soon be gone and then you can yeah. start to use that excess cash into investing but we all it's a comparison point as well she's yeah. she she obviously that wasn't on her radar until other people started saying it and it's a good thing I, it's I on her say, radar. at least she's been influenced yeah. like that way yeah. rather than to spend on something yes. but i i impatience is equals drive like i love impatience impatience is a good thing because it's the thing that will help you speed up yeah. and it's be more intentional long. about it. But there's a reason that it's like globally accepted in personal finance that having a really good cash emergency fund makes us feel better. Um, even if you're not investing yet, you're not missing out on, uh, whilst you're missing, missing out on some mathematical returns, if you're impatient, you'll get there yeah. and then you'll have more money left over. Then. And like we see all the time, you know, four, four grand can turn into 40. Oh, True. easily. It, like it so can, there. which then the math on that is way worse mm-hmm. anyway. So the um, the big thing is habit change here. And by not getting rid of that debt, you are kind of accepting that it's it's kind of okay to have around. And um, as a, speaking to someone who has been in quite a lot of debt before and um, now is, is consumer debt free, there's a lot more room to deploy into investing. 
um, yes, I've missed out on time, but I don't have a load of extra payments come in. And what that kind of means is uh, going out. And so if life hit me and I needed to, um, like spend money on an emergency, there's money sat there. And if I needed to pull back on investing, I could, but I don't have to, but it's not being taken up by payments. Like, and yeah. that's the, that's the thing. So oh, it's not all chucked into investments that you can't get a handle of. Like you can't get into your, you can't just put loads of money in investments and not then put it into drag it out when there's an yeah. emergency. You have to have, the, that's why these um, financial foundations that we go on about all the time are in place for that reason. Do all these things first so that you can do all these amazing things. Sounds like she's going to get there. I love that yes, they were talking about in a friendship group. Influenced. Yeah, <laughs> you just WhatsApp don't hear group. it like no. in our circle of uh, in our circle of friends in this day and age. It's really refreshing when you hear someone talking about investments, especially if it's a female like f- friendship group. Yeah, that's nice. But, but also, I think really important that um, the, the the real danger with investing is that people feel like it is it is it's meant to be more about the compound and the mm. long term and not this like aggressive I'm missing out on something yeah. and so there's kind of a danger with the her, lottery. her urgency yeah. is like she's missing out on some mm. kind of return and literally you know it's you the game. past has shown us that investments go up investments go down what you need to do is put it into um like you know go look at your robo investment providers go speak to a financial advisor pick a risk profile that's right for you and set things going and automate them and, and don't feel like you can time the market or buy something quickly and, and sometimes that can come out when you talk about investing as well I feel mm. like. that's just made me think um me and my boyfriend were talking about or like stocks and shares ISIS the other mm-hmm. day and I've chosen the most risky yes like yeah. personality mm. and he's chosen like the, the mid person medium no, I, like, I Alex <laughs> strikes me as like he would go high risk. No, I think Lucy. I don't know why. He's very sensible. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I think um, you can look at, you d- the good things with like investing is you can kind of look at different profiles. People don't know that. They think they just go with a provider and the person deploys it into, well, first of all, they think they have to choose them themselves and it does depending on what, what platform you go for. Um, but they'll present sometimes like a range of portfolios. So you can go like high risk, like medium yeah. or low so you know, if you are a low risk person, you can have you can explore and you don't. You yeah, don't, you, you don't can make it not as be as aggressive. I yeah. mean, a lot of it, you know, the, your investments that you in via your pension, which is usually typically um, typically linked to what should be the average risk profile for someone of your age, mm-hmm. and it's, it's like age balanced, and that's yeah. how your your pensions will be invested. And so I was talking to a friend recently who um, he's in his fifties, and he was like, oh, my, you know, complaining his pension's not doing something. I was like you're getting older so what they're doing is like make yes you don't get the big rewards but when you want to take out 25 percent tax-free next week it's going to be there it's going to be there rather than ups and downs whereas someone in their 20s can have a well it will be in more risky things automatically without you even choosing it yeah it's a really good thing to go like you you can as a person of different different than average risk lower or higher go to your pension provider and learn more about what you're invested in and if you want to change that you know speak to someone who, who can help you that there's a default there to protect you so that yeah, you don't have to good. think about put everything on black you know yeah. it's not like <laughs> the day I realized I could kind of have a say in what I invested in my pension was like mind blown for that's me that's cool like I'm like this is a secret that everybody knows that I just did not know and <laughs> So many people I speak to have no idea that they can contact, even contact their workplace pension provider and ask that their funds not be invested in things like oil, tobacco. Mm. Yeah. I'm I was an ethical, risky girl. Yes. <laughs> ethical risk. Yes. Ethical risk. Great commercial outside. <laughs> Ethically risky. Girl. I put that on my Instagram bio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got a really, really good community win here. I started 2023 with £46,096 worth of debt. If it all goes to plan, I'll be debt free by February 2025. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's insane. That is a lot of money. What have they been doing to pay that off? That's two years. Also, it's going to be February next month. (laughs) How many surveys do you reckon that is? (laughs) I feel like we're in February. How many surveys have you done? (laughs) That's incredible. I know. Amazing. When you take a sum like that and you divide it up, you know, across the months, it's, it, 
people can't understand no. how you do it, but you do, and you know, it is possible with the money's got a way of finding you, not in a manifesting way. <laughs> do not it. put money in a tree <laughs> and think <laughs> that you're going to get times yeah, 20 return. Come back. It oh. <laughs> but money's just kind of got a way of coming to you when you're looking after it in, mm. a, in a way that you've already got a plan for it. So, um, the money was probably there before it would have come to you before. It's not like, I'm not trying to say there's some magic money that appears, but when you're looking after money, you're just more aware of money coming mm-hmm. to you. So whether it be, um, you know, so like when an you, unexpected bonus or something. Unexpected bonus, yeah. birthday money, tax refund. We do mm. get these. This does, stuff does come into our life, but you've not got a plan for it. It just kind of gets spent. Yeah, yeah, it's disappeared. Whereas when you've made this plan, which is I am getting rid of that 47 grand of debt, and that's literally what I'm focused on. And you've got a budget to look after the rest of your life. So you're making sure that you can, you know, go out for meals every so often and, and buy clothes and and do the shop and do all that. So you've covered your needs. It means that anyone coming in doesn't need to go towards your needs. You've nailed it. That's they're sorted. It's exciting to then throw it off your debt. And sometimes these big chunks that come off it. And then there's the little ones and the little payments. There's just so much dopamine that is connected to that, that um, sometimes it feel can feel like more money's arrived. And it's not usually that. It's usually that it just, you had a job for it. And and that what I'm excited for for them is, imagine when there's no debt payments. <gasps> imagine all the money they're going to have. But you're used to like... Yeah, the, the monthly out. cost, <gasps> the monthly like payments. What is that going to go to? How yeah. much is it, Yeah, please tell us. Yeah. That's like, going to be over a thousand. Post debt goals, yeah. that, that, that might be one to two thousand pounds a month of, of debt so payments exciting. and other payments at the moment. Yeah. <sighs> that's the exciting thing when you pay off a debt. You're like, okay, once that's gone, how what do much? I do with myself? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you go, girl. You've got choice. Team. She sounds like the person that knows what she's yes. going to do after. She's only decided. If you're paying off debt, six, you if you're you're paying yeah, 46 grand worth of debt in two years, you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Wow. Okay. Next dilemma. I'm addicted to buy now, pay later. I need some advice on a problem that's becoming a real burden in my life. I've developed an unhealthy addiction to instant gratification and more specifically, buy now, pay later. Every time I want something, whether it's a new phone, clothes or even a fancy dinner, I just can't resist the urge to use buy now, pay later to get it immediately without worrying about the cost up front. This habit started small but has spiralled out of control. Now I have multiple payments due every month and I'm struggling to keep up. It's affecting my financial stability, causing me stress and I can't seem to break free of this cycle. I know it's unsustainable and I need to make a change but I feel trapped. To make matters worse, I often find myself feeling envious when I see others living within their means and managing their money wisely. It's embarrassing to admit, but I can't help but seek the short-lived thrill of buying things even though I know it's damaging in the long run. How can I break free from this addiction to instant gratification and buy now pay later? I want to regain control of my money and live more responsibly, but I don't know where to start. See, this is why I'm so glad we've got the vault right, because she probably is scared to tell anyone that. Mm -hmm. Like there's, you can t- sense the shame. She's envious of people that are managing money, but she's at, she's got to the point where she's had enough and she's appreciating that this is an addiction and it's spiral and that like, I'm so glad that we've got a platform for people to ask these anonymous questions and share like wins and stuff, but ask the thing that they've just finally accepted. Either way, she, like, she knows what to do. She mm-hmm. just doesn't know how to do it. Like, she knows exactly what she wants to do. She wants to not use it anymore, but... Yeah, it's not the typical, like, brunch conversation, is it? No, no. no. Especially because um, it's, like, sexy marketing, all these buy now yeah. later brands. Um, it's completely normalised. There's lots of pros to it that kind of get shared around. Yeah, it's like it all, almost becomes like a meme of itself. You know, like, a meme of itself, yeah. especially things like, like Klarna. Yeah, like I don't know. It's 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 in um, culture now. It's embedded in. I would say like definitely Gen Z culture because yeah. that didn't exist when we were around, but it did, but just in different well, ways. Know, the millennials are good at using it now. Yeah, but, but we it's packaged but it, up it was introduced to us as this yeah. nice, pretty pink. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> some of them brands with financial Schmaller. wellness pages Schmaller. on their website. Yeah, and so I just feel feel that the, the interesting thing though is what she's she's talked about is what starts as a way to divide up something that she wanted has completely got turned into that slippery slope that yeah. we talked about. But I don't think we've had a question on this before, which is someone who's is someone who's playing around with it a little mm-hmm. bit and who doesn't really see the problem with it. I think this has now gone into 
the most serious like accepting that I am completely hooked like she's using it as a line of credit she's using it as cash flow and I suspect what she's doing is every time she goes to buy something because she's clearly got a spending problem she wants this impulsive spend she's looking at the paying three or six price I was about to say I rather bet than so many people yeah. never look at the total value so say like there's a pair of trainers for £85 pounds. they're just seeing the price it's split into three and of course it is human nature this person it makes total sense why you're using it no one's you know we're not sat here going why would you even bother like clever. of course you would you why pay for something today when you don't need to mm-hmm. like that's that's just makes sense and and, and it for, be a less payment like it's less pain in your pocket but by god does it hang around and does it give you the financial hangover months if not years later of which it sounds like she's just adding on to it constantly never yeah. paying it off it doesn't sound like it's been like clear for a little bit and then she started to build it back up it just seems like a pile on and she'll be paying for stuff that she bought yeah, she won't remember <laughs> a what year it was ago for. yeah no. I think personally when I do my budget like my goal is fixed expenses like as low as possible yes. like that's the place where I'm like right I'm being strict yeah. here like this is and then like to buy something on Klarna mm-hmm. that has to get paid and you know how much it's going to be if you, however many expenses, how many, however many costs it's going to be like separated into. Yeah. That has to get paid. So that's just, and then imagine it's adding on to that. It's just impacting your fixed yeah. expenses. I know what you're going to say. You're like, oh, that, cause that does turn into it. And again, it literally becomes a credit card. I think it, it becomes that yeah. debt loan group. And I think the, the, the first thing, if you're in a situation like this, where you're completely reliant on it and you're addicted is deciding first that you're never going to do it again. Because yeah. if you are going to do it again, it's just all big waste of time. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. such a big you're thing. You're gearing to go yourself through. up and then you're yeah, just like, oh, I'm sure do it just again. Just setting yourself up for disappointment. Oh, I'll pay it off. But then but then if I need a new it, you know, the, what will happen is even if you pay it off, um, the minute an expense that's a bit more than your budget can take comes along, you split into three. you'll do it. So I think deciding and realizing that you don't get ahead, you will spend more. You're literally statistically likely to spend more higher basket values, higher um, average sale values. Um, you you buy more with credit than without and, and buy now pay later like the next level of that because it's this, um, it's on smaller value stuff. Like you wouldn't usually put, yeah. you know, you might not put eight pound on a credit card. You might put a bigger yeah, purchase. Big expense items, yeah, don't but this you? Is, this it's is like, changed I mean, you can game. do it on pizza. Like it's just yeah, yeah. But I feel like you have to make that decision and otherwise it's just a lot of heartache. And then if you make that decision that I'm never going to do it again, you you never do it again and, and you stick to that. So if, if there's anything in your life that's going to come up as an expense that you know you would like to buy, you start a sinking for, from for it and you do the opposite and you do save now, buy later and you just literally commit to yourself. And if you can't make that commitment, like I said, I know I'm like, going over on the point but it's just so not worth it because then once you decided you then have to go through the pain of paying it off and trying to overpay it because then it's this clunky bill it's not these little payments it's say, like stacked if you split a t-shirt into three that's fine but it's when you get the t-shirt and then the jeans and then yeah. the jacket and then the coat and mm. then the design handbag like and then those yeah small what were like 20 pound monthly payments can turn into hun- I've seen people hundreds of pounds worth of buy now for yeah. later payments per month and it will impact your credit score if you don't pay it back well exactly then I mean, it's interest free until until it's not yeah <laughs> until you yeah. do something that you shouldn't and and it is you know it's a lot of um I'm not I don't know whether using these products is held against you or not mm-hmm. some people may suggest it helps build credit but it like the live data that mortgage providers have nowadays, it will be seen as these like buy now, pay later. And for buy mm-hmm. now, pay later to be used so frequently, it kind of suggests you can't manage your money. And so yeah. deciding that you're never going to do it again, uh, building a plan to pay it off. But I think a really good tip, which we might not have shared before, is have a look at the places and websites that you rely on it on. And I think you have to give a, yourself a real hard look in the mirror and go, should I be shopping in these locations? So uh, let's use ASOS. All, we all know ASOS. If you are likely to use buy now, pay later on ASOS because there's like volume of product, isn't there? There's lots yeah. to choose from. Volume? There's... I think I look for a little black dress. <laughs> I think it's like 300,000 options. Of it was I was like, I'll narrow it thousands. down to sleeveless. <laughs> 25,000. I'm like, oh, gone. But I think me. It's recognising that that is not good for you. You are better 
going physically into store now. Mm. I know we've talked about you can use buy now, pay later in stores now, but but disconnecting your accounts and not deciding I'm going to save up in advance. I do need an outfit for a wedding in the summer. I'm going to go into River Island mm. or Next or H&M or wherever it is. And I'm going to not go on the web because the web is the place that I'm yes. more likely to kind of use this split. Change your, ha- change your habits. And I feel like you'll... Um, You'll get dopamine hit from paying off your debt because everyone always does. The biggest wins I see sometimes in the app are when people have shared that they've finally paid off their line of credit and it's not the credit card, it's the Buy Now Pay Later brands. Yeah, it's I like think a victory a lady, against a lady the, the big day, guy. A lady the other day wrote in that she'd done it, that she'd done done with Buy Now Pay Later. We've seen so many people. We are uh, rehab for Klarna, so if you want to come on into the community. Yeah. <laughs> and also, <laughs> I mean, listen, we can talk about Klarna on a factual basis, they're probably going to float this year. So this going to, yeah. like everyone thinks mm. that they're going to IPO. What that means is the white Our men. investments may be going into Klarna, <laughs> which is my biggest concern. So I will well, not yeah, know. Pension funds. Wait, is Klarna ethical? Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but I think my point was going to be the IPO is going to make a lot of white men rich. Mm. And do you know why? <laughs> Because a lot of women, women spend <laughs> went and used Klarna. And so a healthy dose of connectivity and reality there for us, which is when we are using some of these products, that's what's going to happen. They're going to ring a bell, maybe the US, whoever they end up going in pink. They're gonna, it's going to be pretty, <laughs> yeah. but it's going to be because of us overspending. So just everyone bear that Remember in mind that. next time yeah. you're going to use it. And other brands, like they're all the same. Um, the none of them are good are good for us. And it can lead to, a, it, there's always been a shopping addiction problem for lots of people. Credit has always been the thing that's helped people do that because mm-hmm. it's all just pay for it. However, it, it's absolutely, you know. It's taken on a new beast. It's just so frictionless. Yes. Every checkout, you'll see it. Every I said, I didn't realise you could do Klarna in store now. I went into a River Island the other day and the big pink, pink Klarna stickers there. And then you can do it via app and stuff. They've just found really good ways to get you to do it it's just so seamless so and and that's why people feel guilty because like I, I don't know how, how I got here and I'm like I do they spent a th- millions upon millions and millions of pounds to work out the best way to for you to part with your money as easy as possible yeah so don't feel too bad about it but there are things you, loads of things you can do loads Definitely. of things and in the app there's a shit ton of people that have done it yeah, <laughs> so it's good. Yeah, go find them yeah, yeah, go yeah. look at the posts because yeah. it's amazing and those people have done it so it speaks to people that have actually done it and don't feel like you're alone yeah I feel like we've said this before but like that first month <laughs> of not having like monthly instalments come out like I wonder what that feels imagine. like for a lot of people we need to go and find out what people are doing with it yeah something good it's going not replacing like funds. for like yeah hopefully because you don't have to go without like no if you can afford just the a payments, you just need to get ahead and stop. Can we just say by then you don't even want the thing half the time? Yeah, true. <laughs> like, yeah. It's okay. I'll just. I wanted that top. I'll if you do actually a have to go and it. try it on. Who? By the time you set up the sinking fund, you're over it. So what yeah. does that tell you? You don't want it in the first place. So Save true. you pennies. <laughs> okay. Any final words? So we don't get sued by. <laughs> Marla. Please don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> it won't look good on the IPO initial uh, uh, public offering document, so I think we'll be okay. Yay. <laughs> I'm sure they're not worried about us. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> they should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all for this episode. The vault is now closed. Just a disclaimer the vault is just a chat around life and money topics. We are not giving financial advice. 